Good news from the graveyard. He's not dead. Ooh, ooh, ooh. He said, uh, verse 33, For God is not the author of what? Confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. There you go. God don't want people to be full of confusion. He wants His churches to have peace in them. Right? Next. Let your women keep silent where? In the, church. in the churches. For it is not permitted unto them to speak. But they are commanded to be under obedience as also say the law. So how in the world can a woman pastor a church if she's supposed to be silent? How could a woman pastor a church and be the chief speaker when she's not to speak? She shouldn't hold a position to your super authority over a man. Every woman that's doing that pastoring a church has men under her. Men should not sit under something like that. Right? Amen. They shouldn't do it. And uh, women shouldn't be in positions of leadership in the church. None. Now, if they teach a, a child's Sunday school class, that's one thing, or a nursery and things like that. But it should be men. Right? Amen. Amen. And listen, I'm not against a woman testifying. Right? Right. But sometimes women want to get up and testify. They want to preach. We don't need that. Amen? Amen. A lot of people stand up testify. Their testimonies are pointed and, and they're not bragging about what God did in their life. They're, they're instructing the saints on what they ought to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's people that pray like that. They preach their prayers. Mm -hmm. Hello? Mm -hmm. Amen. Their, their prayers aren't directed towards God. They're directed to the people sitting in the pews. Mm -hmm. You understand? I mean, when we pray, we're to direct our prayers towards God. Amen. 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 Listen, I, I know the heart's deceitful and desperately wicked, right? And so, listen, men's motives, they're going to be judged. But I'm just telling you, you talked about a woman being a pastor. It's, it's totally unscriptural right there. And let me give you this. If every Pentecostal church would follow that verse right there, the charismatic churches would be put out of business because they're the main ones that lead in tongues. In fact, these women, Amy Michael McPherson was one of the main people to create the tongues movement. Yep. It was a woman. And these women, I've watched them go up and down the aisles and, and doing these uh, demonic fits, shaking their heads back and forth and their eyes rolled back in their head and they're going... Lulu, 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 lulu. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, I've, I've watched it. I've been in those Pentecostal churches when I was looking for the truth. It's all unscriptural. If you believe the book... It's unscriptural. So do you want to have a scriptural church or you just want to go to church and have one designed the way you want it designed? Right. Amen. That's what all the Pentecostals are doing. Listen, this church is too pointed for people. We, we got a two-edged sword and we sling it both ways. Right? <laughs> and we want to line our book, our lives up and our church up according to what say the scriptures. Right? Right. Amen. A woman pastor is totally wrong. And then you said she was a bishop? Uh -huh. She's a pastor. But you said a bishop. Right? She didn't say bishop. Well, where did I hear bishop from? We have no idea. Well, a lot of people who are concerned. Well, amen. Well, a bishop in 1 Timothy chapter 3, right, is the husband of one wife. Yeah. It doesn't say that let her be the wife of one husband. Mm -hmm. doesn't say that. Somebody would show Joyce Myers that, and she said, oh, well, it's too late for that. Well, get right. Shut her down. Hello? 
Quit the church. Amen? Let your handpicked sissy husband stand up and preach. Or find a man that's called to preach. Amen? The, these charismatic movements all not have that. And the thing is, is that shows you how apostate our churches have gone to where they correct their Bibles, they find whatever they want to do. Now, with that said, let's turn to Revelation. Amen? Revelation. Chapter number 16. Revelation chapter number 16. I want to help you. I want to help you today, this morning. Amen. Uh, preach a little bit this Sunday school hour on let the magic show begin. You know what we need? Everybody's looking for a politician. Everybody's looking for somebody in Washington to represent them, not for salvation, not for Christianity, not for getting closer to God, but they're looking for a politician that's going to supply their financial prosperity to have the American dream to where they can have all that they can have and get all that they want, and they're looking for somebody with dollar signs, not biblical, holy Bible signs. Hello, that's why they're looking towards the billionaire, right? Amen. And I, I watched a little clip on YouTube the other day, and the clip that I watched was a Muslim leading prayer at the RNC, or closing in prayer. And he, we all serve the same God, he said. And he's talking about Muhammad and the prophet. And all these so-called professing Christians like Donald Trump, Mike Pence, and all these other people are letting that rascal get up there. Listen, all religions don't serve the same God. Amen. There's two gods. Right? There's the God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, three in one, right? Then you have Satan, the God of this world. All other religions, bar none, Muslims, Allah is the God. That's what Allah means, the God. It's not even His name. And the God, according to 2 Corinthians 4, 4, the God of this world, amen, is Satan. Amen. So you're either going to serve God Almighty or you're going to serve Satan. You're either going to have a religion that promotes Satanism or a religion that promotes Christianity. One or the other. There's a religion to do. There's a religion to done. It's real simple. There's two paths. There's two gods. There's two ways. Amen. And uh, you've got to be able to accept that. Just because there's 5,000 representations of one or the other, does not mean that there's 5,000 different churches. There's not 5,000. Listen, I heard the other day that India's got uh, 300 million gods. They worship whatever they want to worship. I mean, you go to India, they may be worshiping toenails. I don't know. I mean, I'm telling you. I, they, they worship every, And their gurus take their dung and pack it in their hair and smear it all over their body and they pour urine all over themselves. These are supposed, supposed to be the gurus, the gods of India. Yeah. Dung God, Beelzebub. Hello, yeah, man. Listen, I'm telling you the truth. People don't want to know the truth about that thing. And they got a spirit, and it's called the Kundalini spirit. And the Kundalini spirit was brought over by these false prophets and these false teachers that came to America, and now they've camped out in the charismatic movement. Mm -hmm. Yep. Amen. Right. Hey, it's the Kundalini spirit, and you can go online, you can type that in and look at it. The magic show. Listen, we're going to have a world ruler show up here soon. Amen. He's going to be a beast out of Revelation 13. He's going to be the man of sin, 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2. We'll go to these passages. And then he's going to have a sidekick with him. And that little sidekick's called the false prophet. And that little false prophet's going to have the signs and wonders. We don't have that signs and wonders. Now, Kenneth Copeland wants to be that man. Benny Hinn wants to be that man. Todd Bentley wants to be that man. A. A. Allen wanted to be that man. Oily Roberts wanted to be that man. Hello? All these fake false healers. Now, they got something. When they touch you, they got something. But it ain't the Holy Ghost. Amen? It's a counterfeit spirit. Listen, we got to let the magic show begin. If you want out of here... There's a bunch of things that's got to transpire. Everybody says, and there's nothing left, amen, for the rapture of the church. There's a bunch of things that's got to be transpired before we can wind up having the second advent. 
you got to have an altar. you got to have animal sacrifice. Israel's got to be the head nation. they got to turn around, amen, and get their temple built back. And animal sacrifice has got to begin to go. Something's got to place Israel in that position where she gets her temple, she gets her altar, she gets her sacrifices. None of that stuff's transpired today. And then there's going to be a political leader, and he's going to have a sidekick. And that sidekick's called the false prophet. And he will have signs and wonders. He's going to perform magic. There's all kinds of videos. My uncle showed them on the fire show. Videos out there where men are doing magic tricks through the power of the devil. I mean, that guy can take a credit card and, and then take that thing and float it all the way around his room and bring it back and catch it. They can take like Jesus did. Amen. They take, a guy takes a, a huge loaf of bread and he pulls it out of his hands and he pulls out this big old like four foot long piece of bread that can't be in this hand. Where's it coming from? I mean, they're doing all kinds of things. He can take somebody's cell phone and shove it through a plastic bottle. Somebody's doing demonic stuff today through the power of the devil. And this guy's going to have the goods. Amen. Let's look at Revelation 16. He said, uh, verse 13, And I saw three unclean frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. Now, there's three of them there, right? Three unclean frogs. You, you know, you ever see anybody represent three unclean frogs in any advertisement you've ever seen? Budweiser. Budweiser did it. Amen? And they had billboards right out here. It said Budweiser. Hello, three unclean frogs. Now, who, who would want to represent their business, amen, with three unclean frogs? Well, look at what it says. And they are, for they are spirits of who? Devils. devils. And what are these devils capable of doing? Working miracles. Which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather together the battle of that great day of God Almighty. You know what Budweiser is? The king of beers. The king of beers. Isn't that something? That's a king. And three frogs are going to the king. Hello. And America loves the king. Right? And when Ham gets promoted, he makes himself a king, doesn't he? Like King James, LeBron, King James, Martin Luther King, Nat King Cole. Listen, I'm just telling you. That's what happens. Look at Revelation chapter number 13. Revelation chapter number 13, verse 11. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb. And he spake as a dragon, and he exercises all the power of the first beast. Amen. Before him, and causes the earth and them that dwell therein to worship who? The first beast. This is religious. You understand? This, that ain't political right there. That's religious. Amen. And they're worshiping the first beast, whose deadly wound was he has the power to raise the dead. Isn't that something? For the Antichrist to come and he's the true counterfeiter, he's going to counterfeit a death. And he'd probably be laying in a coffin. And he'd probably raise him up out of that thing after three days, like Jesus did. Hello. The whole world's going to, this political leader is going to die. He's going to be laying there. He's going to receive a wound over his right eye. The other day when I was watching the Pope over there go to... Uh, Iran or Iraq, I forget which one it was, but he went over there to try to meet Habas. And when he met Habas, the Palestinian, when he met him, they were walking down a red carpet and they had soldiers standing there and they had soldiers standing right beside him with a sword. I was wondering how in the world today with guns and security and everything would one of these political leaders get hit with a sword? With all those Iranians and Iraqis and all those guards, they still stand there with swords. And you know what? All he's got to do is those guys are walking by go, just step out. You know, he's standing at attention. He's got that sword right there in his hand. And all he's got to do is come walking down there and then just step out. And when he goes step out, that guy goes like this. He gets hit over his eye and over his arm and he hits the ground. Boom. It's gone. He who received that deadly wound. Then next thing you know, guess what's going to happen? The false prophet's going to go over there and he's going to wave his magic hands. Right? And next thing you know, that thing's going to sit up. 
That beast will sit up and the whole world will worship that beast. He's now alive. At that point, Satan enters into him. The son of perdition enters into him. Amen. Judas is carried. And next thing you know, you got the satanic trinity standing before you with his little sidekick that's a magician. Now when Moses... Moses and Aaron went in onto the Pharaoh. Moses threw his rod down and it became a what? A serpent, right? And then guess what the magicians did? They created serpents, <laughs> right? But then Moses' serpent ate, right, the serpents that the magicians created. Listen, they were, they, when they came to Pharaoh, which is a type of the Antichrist, they had magicians working magic. Amen, amen, amen. You listen, this guy's going to be surrounded by signs and wonders. He's going to have magicians around him. And God's going to grant it. And he's coming in the name of Jesus Christ. I know he's coming in his own name, but he's going to have it. They're going to be doing these miracles. That's what's going on today is miracles in the name of Jesus. And it's a false spirit working miracles to deceive people. <coughs> Watch what it says, Revelation 13. And he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire, verse 13, maketh fire come down from heaven on earth in the sight of men. What did Elijah do in 1 Kings 18 when they offered a sacrifice? They had prayer and they had spent time and he said, He's God who answers by fire is the God. And you know what the devil's going to do? He's given power to counterfeit that. And fire will come down, maybe on an altar. Amen. And consume a sacrifice right there in Jerusalem. He's going to pray that power down. And guess what's going to happen? The whole world. Look at what it says. In the sight of men, verse 14, it deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those. You know what God's going to do? He's going to allow the devil to show up through a man named a false prophet to deceive the world through miracles. Is it any wonder we have a forerunner out there ahead of this thing, the signs and wonders and healing uh, ministries through the charismatic Pentecostal type churches? They're counterfeits. They're counterfeit apostles today. Look at what it says. Which he had power to do in the sight of who? The beast, saying unto them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast. Now, some idiot the other day I was listening to says that's television. And uh, they're making an image. And then he's saying that this is America and uh, this is uh, uh, England together and a beast, the ram, you know, over there out of Daniel. And it has two horns and that's England and that's America. And there's only one nation named uh, that's a Christian nation and that's America. So that's a type of the lamb. And he's going on and on and on. He don't believe it's an actual statue. I believe it's an image. Amen. We have images today. Right? They're making robots right now. They can make a robot look just like you. They're, they're giving them faces just like your face. Oh, I seen one the other day. They, they, took, a, they took a woman uh, that had been dead and, and made a bust. The shoulders and the neck and the head. And when you come home, that looks like their mom. And then they can sit down at the table, whatever, and they can talk to their mom. And they're programming them. So it's a terminal. Yeah. So there's, there's uh, uh, programs now that they're computerizing to put memory in and words and speeches and phrases and things that your favorite person has said. And now you come home, you can communicate now with the dead. Necromancy. Hello. And now you're going to fall in love with an animated object. Hello? Hey Amen. Listen, they got sex spots out there. Send movies all the time. So. They got sex spots. You say, what's that? Uh, Men ain't looking for women no longer. They're going to be able to order online the woman they want and the size and shape they want. Order, and it's going to be a robot. Women are going to be able to do the same thing. They said there's millions of these robots fixing to be turned out. I'm telling you, man, we're living in a weird sign time. They're animating. They're making robots and inanimate objects alive. So for me to see a statue like they have statues of Mary and statues of Jesus, all right, 
Daniel's image in Daniel chapter number 2 is a literal image. They're worshiping this golden image. Right? Has a golden head, has silver, brass, legs of clay, and of iron. They're worshiping this image. There's going to be one set up for the Antichrist. Nebuchadnezzar is a type of the Antichrist. And Israel's going to worship that thing. Hello? Amen. Amen. And, and they're going to wind up worshiping this thing. And they're going to make them worship the beast. Now, has anybody ever been paying attention to anything that goes on overseas? Have you seen what Hitler did and Stalin did and Lenin did and all these communist leaders do? They make images onto themselves and flags and banners and everything. They worship themselves. They want everybody to worship them. That's what they're doing, and that's what they're going to do. This is going to be a communistic beast in Revelation chapter 13, 1 through 4 there. It's going to be communistic. It's going to move like Russia. It's going to speak like England. Amen. That's English, not American. Thank God. They're going to speak like English. And then it's got a leopard's body, <clears throat> right? Yellow with black spots and a white belly. Where's the white man at now? He's on the bottom. White's on the bottom, the belly. Guess where they're putting the white man on the bottom? Amen, amen. You better, you better pay attention to what's going on and read, read, read the Bible. But you know what they're going to do? They're going to wind up worshiping this beast. They're going to have an image to the beast which had the deadly wound by a what? What's it say right there? Revelation 13, 14. The last, next to the last, right there. Sword. sword. He received a deadly wound by what? Sword. A sword. It didn't say a weapon, did it? It didn't say a crowbar. It didn't say a tire iron. Right? It didn't say a ball bat. It didn't say a golf club. It said a sword. You know what people do? They want to spiritualize that and sit back and they go, well, you know, uh, the King James Bible, they didn't understand, you know. Well, really? All right, hold your place right there. Turn to Zechariah 14. King James translators, they didn't understand, you know, they, 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 there's no such thing as a gun back then, and so they're, they're using a weapon. Hello? You with me? Mm -hmm. Verse, chapter 14, verse 1, Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee, and I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and the house is what? What does it, what's it say right there? Zechariah 14.2. The houses will be what? Rifled. Did they have rifles back then? Well, I guess that's a future prophecy. I guess the Holy Ghost knew to put rifles there then, didn't he? How did the Holy Ghost know to put a rifle there? Huh? Huh. It's amazing. See, stick with the book. Believe the book. Amen. Amen? It's going to be a sword. Yep. Amen. It's going to be a stinking Muslim that's probably going to turn around and hit whoever it is. Amen. Listen, I'm tired of modernizing the Bible and changing the Bible and changing Bible words to try to fit and help God out. Mm -hmm. Amen. Listen, we got too many people trying to help God out and they change the book. And when you change the book, you're in trouble. He's going to receive, receive a sword over his right eye and his hand. He's not going to get hit with an AR-15 in his hand and in his eyeball and blow his brains out. He's getting hit with a sword. Amen. Listen, you've got to believe the book. Amen. You know, amen. Back to Revelation 13. Which did, which had the wound by a sword and did live. Isn't that something? And he had power to give life. Now, people have a hard time with that. Say, these guys, scientists and all that, can't create life. What if God gives them the power to do it? This guy can give life. Unto who? The image. Can you imagine, can you imagine something like the Statue of Liberty standing there in a the temple? And an image, a solid granite like that, standing there? And all of a sudden it comes alive and moves. He said, I don't believe that happens. Did you ever watch uh, uh, Night in the Museum? <coughs> Anybody watch Night in the Museum? Night in the Museum Part 2? Uh, somewhere in there, Abe Lincoln gets off his throne. <laughs> and he comes alive. An animated object becomes alive. I know that's television. I know that's computer generated. 
But could you imagine huh, an image in there like Lincoln sitting on his memorial throne and he gets up and becomes alive? That's going to be an amazing thing. I don't believe when the temple's made that the throne that's there and the beast that's sitting on that throne receiving worship is going to have a television set in front of him for you to watch. Now it may be outside in the city and it may be on the walls so you can view what's going on inside but there's going to be an image there in the holies. Right? right. The holy place. So where's the beast sitting in? If his image is in the holy place, where's the beast sitting? Holiest. No, he's not sitting in the holy holies. He's sitting in the most holy place. The holy holies is not a King James Bible term. Right. Amen. It's the holy place. And he's going to sit where he ought not. And the image is going to stand where it ought not. And the Bible talks about Daniel's the abomination of desolation stand where it ought not. He's talking about this image. And the Jew ought to know that idolatry is a sin because God whipped that Jew all the way through the Old Testament. Right? Amen. Over idolatry. Where'd they get out? Worshiping golden calves. Amen. And they had a problem with idolatry all the way through that thing. Amen. I'm losing you guys this morning. You need another cup of coffee. Amen. Verse 15. He had power to give life unto the beast or the image of the beast and the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Capital punishment for not worshiping the new world order's God. The United Nations new God will be a crime if you don't worship him. You know what it's coming down to? Right now they're doing all they can to prosecute Christianity and terminate Christianity, right? Not too long ago we preached on silencing God. They're silencing his preachers. They're handcuffing them. I never would have thought that a bunch of sodomites running around their Victoria's Secrets would wind up taking my Bible out of my hand. That's what they said. When all those so-called... So uh, killings in Orlando, they said it's white conservative Christians that caused all this. Oh, wow. Wow. Because we're against sodomites. Isn't that a Muslim you shot them up? Well, that's what they claim. But uh, listen, you understand? It's a white conservative Christian because we produced hatred against that group of people because we tell them God said it's an abomination, it's wrong, and God killed them. Hello. Amen. And we ought to expel them out of our coast. We ought to get rid of them. And instead, the RNC, they got a sodomite standing up there. And he said he's gay. And then he said he's a Republican. And he said, I'm an American. And he got a standing ovation. Well, why didn't these Christian Trumps and Christian Pences shut that down? Why are they all inviting the gays to come to Republicans? Because they want their vote. Why don't they turn around and treat them like Jehu treated the Baalites and invite them to a party? And then he said, don't let one escape and wipe them out. Asa did that, which is right in the sight of the Lord. He took the sodomites out of the land. You want to do right in the sight of God? Get rid of the sodomites. Now listen. The Bible says in, in uh, Proverbs 14, I think it's verse 34, righteousness exalts a nation. You want to make America great again? That's what one of their themes was, wasn't it? Make America great again? Righteousness exalts a nation. Amen. Righteousness is what made America. Hello? Right. Amen. Not sin. The wicked walk on every side when the vilest men are exalted. Barack Obama exalts the vilest of men. The ones that worship Beelzebub. You know who Beelzebub is? He's the God of filth. He's the dung god. Do I need to describe any more? Hello? Where do these sodomites like to play? In dung. Amen. That's their filthy. They're flies. Amen. They're filthy. And that's them they are filthy. Be filthy still. Right? Verse 16. And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond. Wow. There's going to be people who are going to be slaves at this period of time. Hmm. I don't believe that's just prisoners, men locked up in prison. I believe it's dealing with slaves, bondmen. Right? To receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. 
There's a bunch of these people that's showing you this RFID chips are getting to put in their left hand. You think God messed up here? You think John's a little high and intoxicated with the Holy Ghost and he can't discern his right hand from his left hand? It's a right hand. It's not a left hand. It's not up here on your shoulder. It's not in your tricep. Hello. It's a forehead. Where's your eyes at? In your forehead. Let no man that no man may buy or sell. One world economy. Amen. Save he had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of the name. Anybody know any product out there that's wrapped up with one political leader and ruler's name? Obamacare. Obamacare. Guess who owns Obamacare? Obama. No. Circo. S E R C O. Look it up. Circo now owns. They sold it. Guess who owns Circo? Obama. No. He sold it. Huh? Prince William. Circo is in Prince William County, Virginia. And Prince William owns Circo. And Prince William has over there in Prince William County, Prince William Islamic Center. Isn't that something? Yeah, man. You better, better keep paying attention to what's going on over there. They're not really from England. They're from Germany. And they have a Jewish background connection and an Islamic connection. And uh, he may have a clone connection. Hello, there's a bunch of things out there that a lot of people want to dismiss about the royal family. You want to have a challenge out there on YouTube? Type in Prince William's coat of arms and Prince Charles' coat of arms. And look at those things and look at their, their coat of arms matches Revelation 13. Something to think about. And Prince Charles is called the Savior of the world. And Prince William's mama's name was what? Diana. Great is the goddess of Diana of the Ephesians. I huh, just wonder if there's any connections to all this stuff. Muslim lover, I think. Yeah, they all got it. And, and they're, they're, they got all this background. They got pictures of Prince William and Kate sitting down at the Islamic Center over there. They got an Islamic connection. They got a Jewish connection. They got the Rothschilds, all the money of the world's connection. They, they got a king connection. And oh, yeah, by the way, the Antichrist, I think he's a prince. Hmm. There's something to think about. Obama's not a prince. He's not a king. But there is one out there. And then the airport in Colorado has a young blonde Jew, uh, boy, German boy, coming up to be the Antichrist. And it's in the Bank of America down in North Carolina. They got a mural, and they got Prince William there with Masonic images and everything. And they got this red square coming down through half his head showing you that he's going to be empowered by something. Hmm. I, I tell you, you, you got to pay attention. Maybe the Illuminati and everybody's trying to tell us what's fixing to go on, but the Americans ain't paying attention. But he owns now Obamacare. Hmm. And he's a king. And he may just well become the king of armies and be head of the UN, which our president has now signed over to the UN. And Roletta Lynch, Lynch the attorney general, has signed over. You listening? Have signed over to build strong cities and federalized our police forces. And now you and armies can come in and help fight and shoot and kill in our streets. Not our own name, army. Our armies are scared all over the world. They're going to bring in UN troops and forces to come in and overthrow America. Hello. And you know what? A Russian soldier, a, a Cuban soldier, a Chinese soldier, anybody, Islamic soldier, they won't care that you're an American. And why did Barack, Barack Obama go to police officers and army men and said, are you willing to shoot Americans? Why are all these policemen leaving their post? Why are all these generals getting out of the military? There's something fixing to go on, folks. And I'm telling you, before all this thing goes bad, there's going to be a man show up. There's going to be a false prophet. He's going to have signs and wonders and miracles. He will be backed as a religious leader to be able to perform just about anything you want done. A magic show. Hello. And you're going to be, they're going to be having a one world currency. You can kiss your $100 bill by, your $50 bill goodbye. You can kiss your debit card goodbye. Hello. 
they're going to have a one world currency. You're not going to be able to buy or sell unless you subscribe and pay homage and worship. How did they worship Baal? Turn, 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 turn to 1 Kings. 1 Kings 19. First Kings nineteen. Verse eighteen. Yet I have left me seven thousand where? Israel. Elijah said, I only I am left to serve thee, Lord. You understand? And he says, I have 7,000 left in Israel and all the knees which have not bowed down to who? Baal. Baal, type of God the Father. You understand? Watch this. Every mouth which hath not what? Kissed him. You see that? You know how they're going to worship? They're going to kiss him. You know over there in the Vatican... They went up to the statue of Peter and there's so many Catholics went by and visited and kissed the statue of Peter they kissed a big toe off the statue. They had to rebuild it. You know what's associated with that? They all want to come and kiss the Pope's ring, kiss the Pope's hand, kiss the Pope's feet. All these people want to kiss their idols. My grandma got beat by a nun for not kissing the statue of Mary. She said, that's not Mary, that's just a piece of stone. That nun liked to kill her. I thank God that that nun beat my grandma. I said, why? Because that convinced my grandma there was nothing to that religion and she wound up getting saved and trusting Christ. Amen. Amen. You know what's associated with it? Affection. you got to kiss. You know what you got to do? you got to bow down and kiss their feet. I'm telling you, it's not good. Then no man might buy or sell save he'd had a mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. What's his number? Six... Look at it. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding, verse 18, count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man. I heard a clown the other day trying to teach, and he said, that's not it. Amen. He wants to correct the King James Bible. Beware. Anybody wants to correct the King James Bible. Amen. And his number is 600, three, four, score and six. That's 666. Right? W, 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 va, 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 six, six, six. That's what your monster drinks got. Last night I seen a UFC fight or something like that, and in the circle they had the va-va-va. They had the mark of the beast right there in the middle of it. When you drive a Volkswagen, you got a VW, three Vs, va-va-va. That's six, 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 six letter of the Hebrew alphabet, and that's a numerical number that's connected with it. Va-va-va, six, six, six. You can't go buy or sell anything without that thing, right? This bottle of water, you want to buy it? It's got six, six, six on that barcode right there. You know what you're going to have? You're going to have your social security, you're going to have your zip code, you're going to have your phone number and everything connected with a 666 with an RFID chip and a GPS tracker on it and they'll know exactly where you're at, they'll know what you spend, you know what you buy, you won't be able to do nothing without that thing. And it's got to be embedded in your body, not just a microchip in your in a credit card. Let's go to 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2. The magic show is fixing to begin, folks. Some leader, religious leaders get to come in. That's one thing I haven't seen with this Pope. Everybody said it's according to the, pro, the, the, the prophet Malachi, whoever that guy is, it's probably a Roman Catholic that wrote it all out. It's probably the Catholic Church that gave it to us and they're trying to make sure that they submit to it so they look like the church. Hello? Amen? And what they're doing is they're, they're doing this thing and while they're doing this, what they're doing is uh, this Pope has no signs and wonders power. So somebody's got to come up and have it. And that's why I thought maybe Kenneth Copeland might be part of that because him and the Pope went and had a meeting. And he brought all these people trying to bring all these evangelicals. You know what they just had happen the other day? They had a meeting where? To bring evangelicals and Catholicism and all world religions together. Who, who did that? <clears throat> Where was it at? It was Washington, D.C. All gathered around the phallic symbol. And they're down there by the phallic symbol, and they're down there in Washington, and they were supposed to meet with the Pope, and the Pope was supposed to speak to them, and all these so-called evangelicals were coming, and everybody's trying to get all these Christians to come together. It's pretty amazing. You know what date that was on? <laughs> and the Pope had a shirt called Together, 2016. 
He's wanting everybody to come together and he, he put a thing up that he wants people to come and he wants people to come worship. Do you know what day that was? Does that mean anything to you? I think it's kind of funny. Seven, seven, seven. I thought that was pretty interesting. The cults, now it's the Crowley and them like using that number. It's kind of funny that they met on that day. It's just a coincidence. All these things are coincidence, aren't they? It's just kind of funny. You better be paying attention to what's going on out there. But there's going to be a political leader. Turn to 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2. He's going to show up. And when he shows up, he's going to have power. And he's going to have signs. He's going to have wonders. And this Pope's talking, saying that he's not going to live very long. Hmm. Wonder about that. Second Corinthians or Second Thessalonians chapter number two. Verse eight. And then shall that wicked notice his capital. Notice that? Shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. Amen. And shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Amen. Even him whose coming is after the working of who? Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Let the magic show begin. This guy, this thing's fixing to happen. There's some person going to show up here soon. If the rapture's that close and the time of the end is here where Daniel's 70th week must start, there's going to be a clown show up that's going to have all power, signs, and line wonders. And in the middle of the tribulation there, Revelation 13, there's going to have that false, they're going to have devils working miracles. I'm telling you, we're living in a dangerous time. Let's look at Revelation 17. I seen something the other day, listening to Doc Ruckman about this. After I heard that clown, I wanted to go back through and listen to some things. And uh, Revelation 17 is pretty, pretty interesting. This is dealing with a city that's a religious city whose colors are scarlet and purple and they have a gold cup. You know anybody like that? I watched a video one time named Peter of Rome. It was about a pope. And uh, it was pretty amazing to see all the cardinals in red and purple and see him come up to a, a big old giant gold chalice. And that big gold chalice they would put their vote in on for the new pope. And I go, hmm. Purple, red, scarlet, right? And gold. Matches right here. Mother, and she's called the Mother Church. The Mother Harlots, right? Amen. And uh, notice what it says here about the beast. Verse 7. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and the beast that carrieth her, which hath seven heads and ten horns. The beast that thou sawest was and what? Is not. And shall ascend out of the bottomless pit. What's his name that ascends out of the bottomless pit? Huh? Apollyon. It's Apollyon. Revelation 9-11. Right? It's Abaddon in Hebrew, Apollyon in Greek. He's the king over the bottomless pit. And he's going to make war. Revelation 11-7 against the two witnesses. Right? That's what he's fixing to do. He's a king of the bottomless pit and shall go where? into perdition and they shall and they that dwell on the sea shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is now here's wisdom I mean here's the mind which hath wisdom the seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth and there are seven kings five are what fallen and one is watch this and when he cometh, he must continue what? A short space. A short space. This dude's going to show up and he's going to have a small, limited amount of time. I don't know who this political leader is that he's talking about, but when he shows up, he's going to continue a little space. And then he's going to be killed. And then when he's killed, right, he says, uh, verse 11, and the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth and is of the seven and shall go into perdition. Listen, some dude's going to show up and he's going to appear for a little time and somebody's going to kill him. But then they're going to raise that man back up and when he raises him back up, that beast that comes out of the bottomless pit 
is going to enter into him. That's the son of perdition. Who Jesus called the son of perdition? Judas. Judas, right? John 17, 12. Now, what was Judas according to John 6, 70? He was a devil. Not the devil, a devil. So the spirit's going to enter into this man. Satan's going to enter into this man. And when that man's resurrected, you're going to have Satan incarnate in the flesh. That's the mystery of iniquity. Satan manifested in the flesh. The mystery of godliness is what? God manifests in the flesh. Amen? This thing's fixing to transpire. This thing's fixing to happen. I don't know which man that's on the field right now. I don't know if it's Prince Philip or Prince William, Prince Henry. I don't know if it's Erogan or whatever his name is out of, out of Turkey. Right? There's a bunch of them said he's God and they claim not too long ago that he healed somebody. Hello? And right now he's causing a coup. And the Bible talks about the armies of the north coming down against Israel. Guess where Turkey's at? Dead center. And then there's a guy named Alex up in Greece. And then you got to look at the connection with Obama and Syria. The Antichrist was a Moabitish Jew, a Syrian Jew. He may come out of Syria. He may come out of Greece. Hello? Amen. May come out of the European Union. May come out of Egypt. But there's a bunch of people right there that's all possible. And then the Roman Catholic Church is very much in play. Hello? There's only one man on the face of the earth that believes that every person on the face of the earth is subject to the Roman pontiff. And the Roman pontiff claims that he's God. And he has a seat. And the beast gave him his power and his seat and his authority. And that seat, when he sits on it and he speaks, he claims it's ex cathedra, which means speaking in the place of God as if those things that he decreed are divine rules of God that are superior to your Bible. When he says it's so, when he sits on that throne, it's so. Oh, amen. Do you know what a Jesuit oath is? I read it not too long ago when the Pope got elected, the Jesuit oath to the church. But it, the Jesuits were designed to destroy the Protestant Reformation that was brought on by Martin Luther and Tyndale and Erasmus and other men. Uh, Wycliffe had a little hand in that trying to defeat Rome. But the, through the great uh, Reformation, they created the Jesuits. This Pope is a Jesuit. You ought to read that oath. How they're to kill, strangle, boil, bash babies' brains out, rip women's guts open, amen, do whatever they got to do to defeat a Protestant. Yep. To bring everybody back under the power of Rome. Just for your information, Donald Trump went to Fordham University, a Jesuit school. The Clintons went to Georgetown University, a Jesuit school. <laughs> oh, that's, those are coincidences. The Jesuits are now in power serving the Roman Catholic Church here in Maryland. I'm sorry. I, I shouldn't bring all that stuff up, point that out to you. It might make you lose sleep this afternoon. Hello! There's a man fixing to show up. He's got power. Look at Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter number 24. The magic show is about to begin. <clears throat> Revelation, or Matthew 24, 24. For there shall arise false who? Christ. You can go on YouTube. I've seen one video that contains three of them. They all claim they're Jesus and they got followings. There's a guy down in Florida that claims he's Jesus. And the people are throwing millions of bucks in, in their offering plates. People are willing their 401ks and all this stuff to this guy. Amen. And he's causing all his followers to get 666 put on them. They're going to get tattooed. And all his followers are getting tattooed 666 on their bodies and stuff like that. And he says, he said he took care of sin. Sin's gone. There's no such thing as sin. He paid for it. It's gone. The Bible said the second time he appeared without sin. So he's taking that scripture and he's twisting it. You understand what I'm saying? This guy's using the scriptures to twist it. Claims he's Jesus. I'm telling you, you better be careful. There's false Christ out there. Look at what this says. And false prophets and shall shew great signs and wonders insomuch that if possible they shall see the very light. You know how many Christians have been sucked up in the charismatic movement because they went down and some guy touched them in the forehead and zapped them? 
And they said, it's got to be real because some guy put my lights out. There's people, I know, I know Christians right now, they'll sit back and they say, I know tongues is right. And they say, why? Because my grandma spoke in tongues and she was the holiest woman I ever knew, so the tongues are right. And I'm saying, you're wrong. Your grandma was deceived. She got a false spirit. Holy Ghost was not doing that to her. And they say, oh yeah, 2 Corinthians chapter number 3, or 11. 2 Corinthians 11. Just because it happens to one of your loved ones does not mean it's right. You better know the book. And you better be able to stand up to your family and say, you got a devil. You're following something that's not right. First or second Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 11. Verse 4. Verse 3. But I fear lest by any means the Satan beguiled thee through a subtlety your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not re preached, or if you receive another spirit which you have not received, or... Another gospel which we have not accepted, you might bear well. They got a false spirit. That spirit, people are now today coming forward and they said, You might have got saved and got the Holy Spirit, but now you need to come down and get the Holy Ghost. A separate act, a separate thing. They're receiving another spirit. And proof they re receive it is they'll flop on the floor, they'll speak with unknown tongues, they'll bark like dogs, they're going crazy. Watch Kenneth Hagin. He sits back in Mock's Baptist and says, you guys don't know nothing about the Spirit of God. And then he got the Holy Ghost and now he's deceiving multitudes of people to follow him. Watch his videos. Unbelievable what they do. They'll go hours. And he gets his holy laughter and laughing and breathes on people. And next thing you know, he's knocking them all over like bowling pins. It's garbage. Todd Bentley and them get into this thing and they get to shaking. I mean, he's standing up there just shaking. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. And he touches somebody and then they go to shaking and flopping and doing all kinds of stuff. It's satanic. It's a counterfeit. Amen? You know anybody that speaks in tongues? <laughs> it's a counterfeit. The real tongue is Humberto Gomez. The real tongue is Cliff Taylor. You say, what's that? They can speak different languages. they got a gift to be able to go over and speak languages and understand. Brother Taylor knows six different languages. Bill Haig knows like six different languages. Dr. Ruttman knew several different languages and could speak them. He can speak German, Hebrew, and Greek. Listen, you got to understand all that. That's the gift of tongues. Amen. Look at what it says in verse 13. For such are what? 11, 13. For such are what? False apostles. Deceitful workers. Transforming what? themselves into the apostles of Christ. I was watching one night TBN. There was Robert and Kenneth Copeland and Robert uh, Richard Roberts uh, or Roberts' son mm -hmm. and there's some women and they're all up there and they said, Kevin, uh, uh, they're talking about Kenneth Copeland. They said, Kenneth, the other night you was talking and when you was talking the anointing came on you and you was transformed. And he said, and you passed that microphone off to Richard and when Richard grabbed that microphone, he was transformed and when you passed it on to Gloria or whoever they passed it on to some woman and she got it and she was transformed and the Holy Ghost goes do you see anything there son I said yeah and I went to this scripture they're transforming themselves they're building themselves up and they were in on it together transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ they want you to think they got it they're liars and no marvel for Satan himself is what Transform. It's amazing that we're living in the Transformers days, aren't we? Kids are watching all these things about Transformers. Yeah. And then there's transgenders. And then the Bible says you're entertained by angels unawares. Iron mixed with clay. Maybe you got a bunch of fallen spirits that's in human bodies. Hmm. Something about that. As it were in the days of Noah, so shall it be. Hmm. I wonder how many of these people that's out there that you're watching and getting entertained by that's actually a real human and not like a devil like Judas was. Hello. He said, Jesus Christ will bruise the head of Satan. And he says over there, I'll put enmity between thy seed and the seed of the woman. Satan's going to have a seed. He's going to have a son. Hello. Hey, man, i, I got to get off all that. Verse 15. Therefore, there's no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness. They're counterfeits. They appear like the real thing. And you know what they're doing? There's a bunch of them standing up and they're derailing Christianity and make, they're taking Christianity into a ditch. And they're mocking real old-time Christianity. 
And they're changing it. They're changing the hymns. They're changing the songs. They're changing the music. They're changing, they're changing everything. Let's go to Revelation 19. Revelation 19. I know you guys all know this. This is old hat. Don't mean nothing to you. Right? I'm talking about this thing being right up to date. This thing's fixing to come to pass right before our eyes. Hello? In Revelation 19. He says over here, verse 19. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. Can you imagine the devil leading these troops out into the valley of Armageddon and saying, Jesus Christ coming back, let's kick his butt? What a joke. <laughs> and people's going to be riled around saying, yeah, let's go get him. He said, yeah, Jesus is coming back and he's bringing an army with him. Come on. And he's leading people out to the slaughter. What, what an amazing thing. Verse 20. And the beast was taken. And with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him with which he deceived them that received the mark of the beast and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive where? You know, look at fire. You think that was a system? You think that was uh, a kingdom that he just tossed in the leg of fire? Was it a real man? I read the passage right there. It's a, it's a real man. It's not a system. That knucklehead I listened to the other day, you know what he had? Hello? He had a system, a kingdom, an empire. You think God just cast in two empires into the lake of fire or did he cast two men in the lake of fire? Do you think those empires worked miracles or do you think a man worked the miracles? I think it was a man that was possessed of the devil according to Revelation 16, 13, 14. It was working miracles. And God allowed that power to come to deceive those that don't want to receive the truth. Right? They're both cast where? In the lake of fire and brimstone. Let's go back to Revelation. Real quick. Revelation 14. Verse 10. And the same shall drink the, the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Well, I tell you what, it's coming down. People's going to head to go, they're going to burn in a lake of fire forever. Not just hell. Hell's, te hell's a temporary holding place. Hell's like the county jail. Second Thessalonians, and I'm done. Second Thessalonians chapter number 2. Hell's like the county jail and the lake of fires and eternal prison. And they're going to burn there forever and ever to follow this clown, follow this knucklehead, follow these deceivers. They're going to wind up taking the mark of the beast. They're going to get it in their right hand. They're going to think it's okay. Listen, you're dealing with a, a movement of Christianity out there that anything goes. And if they mention Jesus, they worship it. They better be careful because some knucklehead's going to come and he's going to have signs and wonders and there's some people that's going to bow down and worship this guy. You said, well, this is only tribulation what you're talking about. The, not, the charismatic movement started back in 1901, I believe it is. And it's been going on for over 100 years, people following this movement. as a forerunner of the Antichrist. Look at what happens. 2 Thessalonians 2, 9. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Why do people go to hell? They love not the truth. They receive not. They won't receive it. Hey Amen. You can go to the doctor and you get your prescription. And you can sit there and look at that prescription after you come home from the pharmacy. You don't take the medicine, you'll never get healed. You don't take the gospel and receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, you will die and go to hell. You must receive Him. Not just believe about Him. You must place and exercise faith in Him and receive Him. As many as what? Just acknowledge Him. No, as many as received Him. Boy, you better get that. With all deceivableness and unrighteousness, then it perish because they received not. The love of the truth that he might be saved. For this cause, God will send them a strong delusion. Let the magic show begin. That they should believe a lie. 
that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. You know what the devil's done? He's made sin appealing. He's made sin fun. You know what? He's got a bunch of people out there because it tingles their flesh and tingles their body. They're not willing to leave something that tingles their body. Why do we go to Cedar Point? Why do we go to Kings Island? Because we love the tickle in our belly. Right? We like riding them rides and getting a tickle and a thrill. See? Right? I mean, that's why they go. Why else would they go? Right. I mean, people want a tickle. People want a thrill. Why do you think guys get on a motorcycle and do 150 miles an hour? There's a thrill. Why do you think right now it's popular on YouTube to promote all these motorcycles to outrun the cops and race cops? Because it's a thrill. See? They want pleasure and unrighteousness. Pleasure. Women dancing on a bar pole, men watching them. Why are they doing that? Because it's a thrill. And these men are getting thrilled. They love being entertained. Ah, muse, meant. No thinking. Amuse. No thinking. We don't want to think. We just want to be entertained. <laughs> I think you're, you're doing it right, bro. Hello? Amen. Right? That's what we want to do. We just sit there and we get entertained by Hollywood, Lost Angels, entertainment land. The devil's got us in a place where all we're doing is looking for a thrill, whether it's shooting, whether it's fishing, whether it's boating, whether it's sun tanning, whether it's watching porn or whatever. The devil's got people just enjoying pleasure. And when you go to church, it's a bummer, it's a depressant. Because you face reality there and find out you're wicked, you're no good, and God takes away all your fun. But he places fun with joy. Real joy down inside here. Ain't no joy like knowing your sins are forgiven and you're, you're not going to go to hell. Amen. But the problem is we can't get people lost today. You know why we can't get them lost? Because they don't want to hear they're wicked and they're vile and they're, they're condemned to go to devil's hell and they must repent. They don't want to hear that. So what they're going to do is they're going to follow some clown that shows up in the flesh and he's going to have a circus with them and people are going to flock to him. It is fixing to be a crime to worship anything but him. They're going to outlaw Christianity. There's going to be one leader come up. And somehow he likes Judaism. Because he moves to the temple, not the Dome of the Rock. He goes into a temple. And then they wind up offering sheep and goats and red heifers on an altar. Somehow Israel receives this guy. They think he's his Messiah. Somehow Judaism has got to be revived and connected with Christianity and Islam and all that other stuff. And this guy that can work the miracles is going to be responsible for bringing it all together. And then they're going to worship the false man, the man of sin. Father, we love you. Thank you, Lord. Suppose at night when you close your eyes You take your final breath All the years you spent here on earth Not a minute would you have left Did you ever ask the Lord to save you Ever get down on your knees and pray Do you know what you're gonna hear when you face him on judgment day Will he say enter in my good and faithful one Or will he say depart from me I never knew you and the wicked things you've done Will you Final time, do you?